Hello, welcome. I'm Hannah. All year long, I've been randomly selecting eyeshadow palettes every month. I draw them out on random slips. I use them all. And then after every couple months, I come back and I decide what I want to keep, what's not worth staying in my collection, all that good stuff. So we have wrapped up the 2023 random palette selection. I did my December palette. I just recently posted my recap of the past few months. But I had one last thing gnawing away at me that I wanted to discuss, and that's all of the shadows that I didn't randomly select this year. There wasn't that many of them, but there was enough to fill like one or two more palettes, and I'm not going to do that. So I thought it'd be fun to pull all of those out, look at all of them together, see what I didn't randomly select, if I did use them this year or not, if I like them, if I forgot about them. So let's take a look at that. So I did start pulling them out before I realized I could feel myself pulling them out. We're just going to speed through this, but I already pulled out Cleona and Glaminatrix. Hold, please. Okay, it's been so many hours. My cat slept <laughs> right here all day, but I just gathered off camera the last couple shadows that I was looking for, and I have three slips that I did not find the shadows for, and I think that these were decluttered. I have Terra Moon Celine, ColourPop I Owe You, and Menagerie Cobra, but other than that, these are all the shadows that were left in my boot at the end of the year. A couple observations. This is like most of my ColourPop shadows. There might have been like six <laughs> that were drawn throughout the year and then like two thirds of them weren't. So that's interesting because I always really do enjoy using my ColourPop mattes and I feel like any of these, like I really like this little color story here and any of these would have accented a palette really nicely. So I feel like that's kind of a shame, but that's, that's the spirit of the random. Other than that, I do feel like it's a pretty normal assortment. There's more Luxy shades and other shades, but I do have more Luxy shades than I have of the other brands. So yeah, I think I want to do a little separation between the ones that I know for sure I used this year and the ones that I know for sure I didn't. So these two Shine by SD, I got them this year, so I know I used them. Same with that Dandelions one. Same with these three shimmers from Glaminatrix. The matte, I know it was coming up in random palettes for a little while, but I don't know if it was this year, so I'm going to put it in the no side. From Cleona, I know I used Ochre, and I did not use Lux. I know I used this Luxie matte, the light one. I probably used the darker one, but I'm going to put it in the no section because I don't know for sure. These four from Menagerie, I would bet that I didn't use them. My Menagerie shades tend to be more tucked away just because I think about them less. And then I use them less. So I feel like without deliberate action, I did not use those. Same with this Adept shadow here. For the Luxy ones, that's kind of a hard call. A year is such a long time. And like, I know I, I swatched some of these, but I don't think that counts as like a full year. A one note, this is Luxy Rosé, which I did technically pull in my December random palette, but instead I took out Hot Rod, not realizing until later. So when I was going through and I saw the Hot Rod slip, I pulled out Rosé instead. I'm going to say Rosé I did not use. I know I did use Peppermint Kiss. I really like this for like a little accent, but yeah, probably I didn't use the others. I don't know. No, Blue Lagoon, I know I used... That might have... Oh, 
I'm trying to think. I know I have an Instagram story where I use Blue Lagoon, but that might have been a year ago. I guess I'm going to put those in the did not use side. For these ColourPop ones, I know I used this light pink matte. I just used that recently. I know I used this one and this one, this one, and this mauve here. Oh, and I know I used this one not too long ago also in that stocking stuffer duo with the Cleona shades. But these four, I don't know, so I'm going to keep them over here. Pretties for Your Face Moby, definitely use that. Dandelions Tiramisu, just stuck my finger in this Pretties for Your Face one. I did not use that. That's Phenom. And then this Satin also, this is 11. For the Terra Moons, I used Red Giant. I've used Milky Way, I got that this year. I used Cosmic Dancer, oh, I missed this Luxy one. I used Arcturus. I used Venus. But I'm not sure about M51 and Titan. And then we have Divina Shadows left over. This is Verdant Frost. I know I use this on my inner corner. But the other ones I'm not sure about. This is Cygnus. We have Kazookles. Two of those... What's the name of the collections escaping me right now? But the really metallic looking collection. This is Marama. I feel like this one I could have benefited from having it in a random palette because I always forget to use this. It's a little bit too chunky, I think, for my inner corner. So I probably should put it with my regular Davina shades and not in my inner corner palette. But it's been living in the inner corner palette and therefore I always forget to use it. Interesting. Yeah, I feel like the average of both sides kind of looks the same. I have cat food on my bed. I'm sorry if you can see that. You know, there's some neutrals, there's some pinks, there's some pops of whatever. I guess there's a lot less blue and green in the shades that I've used. But this is just such a random assortment anyway that it's not its not enough to, to make a judgment. I'm trying to decide what I want to do with this palette. I was excited to see in one place all the shadows I didn't randomly select and therefore didn't definitely use this year. But once it's out, I'm like, what do I want to do with this? I think this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to dismiss all the shadows that I did use. And then with the ones I didn't, maybe I'll try to make like one or two little color stories with them. And then throughout the rest of the year, if I don't know what shadow to wear, maybe I'll reach into this palette and I'll use one of these. So I'm going to put these beauties away. With all of these like rich greens and rich like warm colors right next to them, I'm inspired to make one palette look kind of like a Christmassy palette. And then the other one will be the rejects <laughs> assembled in whatever way makes it look half decent in the true spirit of a random palette selection. So there's 33 shadows here. So basically like two 16 pans and then we'll have one left over. So for the Christmassy palette, I'm inspired by this green in particular, and then this adept one as well. I also like the idea of purples in it. So I'm gonna include burlesque, starling, flower boy, this menagerie one, I think Cygnus. I also, I have Lux and Marama, and both of them I really have the same issue with, that I don't tend to wear them in my inner corner. I keep them with my inner corners. I need to determine if there's a way that I like using them otherwise. And since I didn't get to randomly select them, I'll have to do that on my own. But because I'm already overwhelmed by them, I don't want them to be next to each other because I think that will add to the confusion. So I think I'm going to put one in each palette. Let's see. I think Marama is more blue. Marama looks very green on camera. And then Lux looks very yellow and mauve. Yeah, very different shadows. So I'm going to do Marama with these and then I'll have Lux with the other palette. Maybe the same thing with these two Divina ones. I'm still a little bit confused by this whole collection. There's a couple standouts. I love Earthshine, but when it comes to the other ones that are more similar, I tend to not use any of them because I'm kind of unsure about their differences. That might be something I want to, you know, declutter down a little bit further in the in the new year. But for now, I'm going to separate them one in each palette. So we have, I think this is Pink Flare. Yeah, Pink Flare and Fire Hunt. Pink Flare, Fire Hunt. Yeah, in the, out of the light, you see the difference the most. But Fire Hunt just looks so silver. I think I'm going to put Pink Flare with these. I'm so sorry that that was out of frame. Here's the shadows I have pulled for the more Christmassy one.
Oh, I don't know where I need a lot more shadows here. Let's do 11 from Produce for Your Face. This is a shadow I definitely need to try out more. I bought it because of the success with their Satin Moby, but I'm never inspired to reach for this just because I don't really like remember what I'm going to get. Let's throw in Ink Defense and M51, and we still need three others in this color story. I feel like we could do a bronze, but I don't know if it's a little bit too out of the color story. But I guess we should because I feel like otherwise we're kind of screwing the next color story. So that's the Monarch from Luke C. We'll do Anaconda from Luke C. Hmm. And you know, maybe we'll work backwards. Maybe then I'll actually no. <laughs> I was going to say I could start putting together the other palette and see what doesn't work there. But that could be anything. And I don't want anything for this color story. You know, Once Upon a Time is a little odd in there, that lavender, but I kind of like it. It ties in with the purples, and something about this does give me the vibes of, like, I don't know, just really being smothered in Christmas. The magic of being a child and the whole world feels so Christmassy. Something like that. Yeah, I'm going to leave that for now. We'll start working on the other palette, and we'll see if I want to adjust it based on that. Maybe that lavender will be the glue that could hold together the other palette, and I'll be willing to give it up. Yeah, I think this other palette's going to be awful. You know, if I was willing to give up these purples, it might make this color story better. If I was willing to just abandon the purple element of this palette and maybe take on some pinks. And you know... This shadow is called Gingerbread, so that is pretty Christmassy. And I could take this brown. You know, something about this I don't mind. It really does change the overall vibe of it, but it still does feel Christmassy. Something about that light pink feels very like, like getting dressed up around the Christmas tree, like getting dolls with bows in their hair as a present, something like that. And although I want this to be the neat 16 pan one, because I like this one more, this probably will end up going with this color story more. So I could just <laughs> stick it underneath it. Or you know what? Hmm. No, that might take too much configuring. I was going to say, if I could put a green one on the bottom, then it's like, that's the trunk, or this brown one could be the trunk. And then the palette is a tree. You know, it's not perfect, but we're working with what we have. Eh? Okay, this did end up working. I feel like this is two distinct color stories here. I hate the yellow, like, in the context of that color story, but I like the placement of it because I kept it away from the blue and the purple, which I would like it next to the least. And it really just ended up being, like, purple row at the bottom, blue row, brownie row, random row. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I guess let's swash them out. Why not? You know how YouTubers are always like, I forgot to turn the camera on for that part. And I've always been like, how, how do you forget to turn the camera on? But I forgot to turn the camera on for the last four swatches. And then I just did that one totally out of frame. Man, I've never swatched using my left hand before. And that was a challenge. Plus, my left middle fingertip is numb from stabbing it with the scissor last year, so I can't even tell, like, how much product I'm picking up on my finger. But I got the job done, and I'm really excited looking at these color stories, mostly this one. I definitely think I'll be reaching into this palette and creating some holiday looks with it. But here, as I learned from doing the random palettes, sometimes the palette as a whole doesn't look like my favorite, but there's still good shadows within it. So maybe if I'm sick of the holiday color story, I'll switch into this one for a little bit. I hope this was fun to watch. It was a pretty 
directionless video, but I feel like it just turned into me playing around with my single shadows. And that's fun. That's great. This is the kind of thing that I might do on my own, just like have colors in front of me and be like, how would I arrange them? So we did that here together with a specific group of shadows. And I have a new little quest to try to use these before the end of the year. Either that or I'll just totally forget about it. But I think I will reach into this. I think I'm going to wake up tomorrow and be like, ooh, I want that Christmas tree palette. If you enjoyed this though, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up and subscribe. It really means a lot to me. And there's always way more indie makeup content on the way. Thank you so much for being here. Bye.